Hello. I wanted to record a video here because some people have been asking about how it is that I've been working on some of my projects, uh, what my methods are, what kind of stuff I'm using, uh, what I've built up. So, I thought I would show an example of a blast furnace that I've been using, that I made. Um, as with any first foray into a field, it's, uh, it was wrought with uh, issues, um, things I didn't think about until afterwards, uh, inefficiencies, we shall say. So, um, with that, I'll bring up the first one here. Uh, everybody say hello to the kitty. This is the first blast furnace, if you will, that I made. Uh, simply out of in a steel bucket. Um, I actually used a chimney pipe, uh, like what you would get for a, hot, a gas hot water heater or something like that. Um, use that to place in there. Uh, I did put about two to three inches of concrete in the bottom uh, to make the actual blasting area. And then uh, after it was all set up and cured, I thought, oh, I need some holes in here. And so I drilled the holes after having poured the concrete and let it set. Uh, don't do that. Make your holes first. Put your pipes in, whatever, however you can rig it. Um, just because this way took entirely too much effort and it looks gnarly and nasty. So. Uh, I started with just six holes along the sides because I was actually going to be doing um, a charcoal based blast furnace where uh, you would force air into there to uh, accelerate the, the heating process with the charcoal. Uh, a couple of things I learned. Now a, a lot of uh, sites would recommend using something like a hair dryer uh, to provide the compressed air. Um, I thought I would one-up that and use the output of a shop vac. Do not use the output of a shop vac. Uh, it blasts entirely too much air in there, and yes, it does start the blast furnace process. Uh, you get a nice loud roar out of your charcoal. Uh, however, you also get lots of little flaming bits flying into the air because there's just too much uh, coming out. So. Uh, I had abandoned that, and I had even played with the idea of like filling in these holes, uh, but I never did because it never actually became such a big problem. Now, I did find later on that I wanted to put something bigger than just the barrel of a torch in there, which is something I switched to eventually when I stopped using the, uh, the charcoal. Uh, so I had to bore a big hole through there, and... When I said the other holes were gnarly, um, this one is the gnarliest of them all. Spent a lot of time with a hammer and a chisel trying to chisel the rocks out. Um, it was just, with every swing of the hammer I was going, this is dumb, this is dumb, this was dumb. <laughs> so, uh, always make your holes first, people. First, first, first. So, this guy has uh, done well for me. I know a lot of people have complained about using just pure concrete. Uh, it doesn't work so well because it cracks and it falls apart and it degrades and um, you know it, it, it never ends well for them. I have found with using the uh, the chimney pipe in here that um, you know this is just tin, but it's it's lasted through thousands of degrees. And I say that because I have melted aluminum in here. I've melted glass in here. I've melted uh, copper. Uh, some of these, you know, have to get up to 1,400, 1,800, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to, to melt. And as you can see, I still have metal in here. It's because of the cooling of the concrete around it, I imagine, uh, that kept it there. So, um, either case, after having abandoned charcoal, the way that I would actually do the uh, uh, blasting with this now is that I would use just standard um, propane tanks here. 
Uh, oops. Gotta turn on. Nothing fancy. I actually had to rebore these holes here so that they were uh, big enough to let these bottles, the, the nozzles, go through there. I would set up two of them like this in a crossfire pattern uh, so that when they're going, they'll actually come together at a point in there. I've learned that that is actually a inefficient method that you actually want to cause a swirling vortex in there and that will actually heat your crucible more evenly uh, and more correctly. Now, I also, while that would be going uh, with these two, I'm not a very patient person, so I would boost things up with a little map gas in through the big hole here. And with that one, I would definitely get a swirling uh, motion going. Also, one thing to note is that I don't normally operate this on my plastic toolbox because this bucket uh, will get hot. It actually uh, left a ring on the floor one time when I didn't know about that yet. Uh, so I normally have it sitting on top of this pot here uh, that you know, when it's upside down, but it's holding something else right now so I can't do that. I will give a short demonstration of what it's like in there with the, uh, the torches going. mentioned the crucible a few times here. As soon as I get the camera set back up, I will show you what I've been using for the crucible. This beauty here is uh, a clay graphite crucible that I ordered off of Amazon. Uh, I had another one uh, at another time that uh, due to uneven heating with a map torch, uh, it blew out a big chunk of the uh, the crucible on the side and it lasted for probably another month or so after that but eventually uh, you could see daylight through it while looking in there kind of realized that eh, mm, can't melt in that anymore so I had to get another one here it is now other thing you absolutely have to take into consideration when you're making your blast furnace is the space around your crucible versus the crucible itself. Uh, like this right now, this is too much because with the way the flames were matching up, I'd have to move it off to the side here. And now I've got this, what, inch and a half gap right here of escaping heat. So to combat that, I started using these guys. These are Amico fire bricks. These, this brick right here is probably a pound. These things are super, super light, and they're really good at insulating heat. They are fire bricks, after all. So, while the torches would go, I would put two of these across the top. Uh, I had tried it with just laying one like this, but it actually doesn't block enough of the top, or enough of the hole. Um, I also found that I had to spread the bricks like this and leave this gap right in the middle for the air to escape, otherwise uh, I wouldn't get an efficient heating process. Uh, these will get red hot at their bottoms, but it will still be cold enough for you to pick up with a, an okay pair of like leather gloves or, or uh, welding gloves. Uh, you won't scorch yourself even though the other side is red hot. So, that having been said, it's time to create a new uh, blast furnace because uh, I want to get that swirling vortex effect uh, so I can stop wasting fuel, which is effectively what happens uh, when you have inefficient heating practices. So, let's 
going to go over what is going to be happening for that. Let me take the old busted, get it out of the way here. Now, pretty same story here. Uh, steel bucket that apparently has had some holes punched through it. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be holding concrete soon. That'll plug right up. Now I want the smaller diameter uh, vent. Um, well, it's yeah, a Mara vent, uh, gas vent. So this would be attached to the top of like a, a, a hot water heater or something like that. Um, I've gone and already drilled out the holes here. 